So let's talk about the proposed bubble lift from Bozelle to Courcheval. Bienvenue and welcome to 150 Days of Winter. Hello. Seven screws, one plate. Uh, according to analytics, about 95% of the people who watch my channel aren't subscribers. And as I am like 250 subscribers away from being monetized, uh, if you're watching this and you would like to be reminded when I make more videos and you feel that I deserve a subscription, please click on the subscribe button below the video. Uh, it would be much appreciated. So I thought I'd have a quick word about a project that's been on the drawing board since what feels like the beginning of time. Or maybe not that long, but let's say more than two decades. So currently, Courcheval is having its mayoral elections. I could make an entire video uh, making fun of the mayory, but for various reasons, I won't. Um, <laughs> um, however, the mayoral elections are coming up and all three candidates are talking about, among many other things, building a lift from Bozal, which is at the bottom of the valley, to Courchevel. I think in this case, Courchevel 1550. Uh, Jean-Yves Pachot is tired of the seven to 8,000 vehicles uh, going up and down in the various hamlets daily. It's unbearable. We need cable transport for the valley, for Bozal. We've been talking about this for 30 years. It will be done, I think so, even if it will indeed be very expensive. It's a necessity. Transport that opens very early and closes late. Everybody wants it. Monitors, seasonal workers, customers. Now, there is so much to pick apart in that statement that I could be here till next week. Basically, they want to build a lift from Bozelle to Courchevel 1550 with a mid-station in saint -Bon to cut down, he says, to cut down on the number of vehicles coming up the mountain. I don't know where he got his number of seven to 8,000 cars daily coming up and down the hill. If, if I was being polite, I would say that's being a trifle optimistic. Maybe for one weekend in the highest of season when Courchevel is hosting the Women's World Cup giant slalom, but even then, I would put that count at maybe several thousands. And even if you doubled that number to count like cars going down the hill after at the end of the day, I don't think you're going to get anywhere near seven to 8,000. But again, if he wants to use that number, good for him. Will it be expensive? Uh, yeah, using probably the same the quantitative methods that he used for counting cars, I would say you're looking at probably about 20 million, roughly, I would say. But I, 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 I think you're in the eighth figure sum for building this lift. In his next statement, transport that opens early and closes late. Well, using other lifts as an example, and by other lifts, I am talking about one which is quite close by. Uh, which runs out of Breed Le Bar. Uh, they open at 8.30 in the morning and they close at between 5 and 5.30, depending on what part of the season. Now, to me, neither of those is early or late, with the exception of ski instructors, who actually that time period there suits them absolutely perfectly. Most people who work in the resort work outside those hours, okay? I know that shops stay open till seven, eight o'clock. Restaurants stay open till about 10. Yeah, I. no matter who says it, I don't think any lift is gonna stay open past six o'clock at the very latest. And ironically, if you actually head towards the bus stop at around six o'clock, all the buses that take all the security de piste and lift operators, down the hill, down to the valley, all leave at that time. So if they're all leaving, who's going to be running the bubbles? 
Yeah, maybe that's a good question. Will it really cut down the number of cars coming up the mountain? In my opinion, no, not at all. If this lift is coming up to 1550, anyone staying in 1850, 1650, uh, I was going to say most of 1550, La Pra and Latania, so I've already listed like 95% of the resort, isn't going to go and park their car down in Bozelle if they're staying in Courchevel for a week. It's just not going to happen. Seriously, just using 1850 as an example, completely populated by five-star hotels and private chalets, they're going to want to drive there and they're going to want to park by the chalet, by the hotel and park there. It's just going to happen. Okay. Likewise, Latania. This lift goes nowhere near Latania. All the cars going to Latania won't be affected. La Pra, La Pra has some brand new parking. Loads of people are going to go there. Okay. Uh, even 1550, there are certain parts of 1550 that are nowhere near where the lift is. And again, so uh, I, I, you, you might say I'm picking holes in, in things, but I'm just trying to be realistic. Okay. People love their cars. Basically, the structure of Courchevel villages makes it very vehicle necessary to use their premise that this is going to the cut down the amount of traffic. No. If you want to lift from Bozelle, call it what you want. So who is going to benefit from this lift? People who already live and own property in Bozelle. There are a lot of workers who live down in Bozelle and of course they, they already live down there. They, of course, are going to benefit from the fact that they won't have to drive up the hill. OK, that'll save a small amount of traffic. But however, if you own property there, as soon as you build a lift, property prices are going to skyrocket. OK, so, of course, anybody who owns anything is going to like make a nice return on their investment. I know that's not, uh, but it's the honest truth. And of course, because the middle station stops in Saint Bon, where of course the mayor's offices are, it will make it very easy for people who are working in the mairie to live down in Bozelle because their hours of the mairie are probably the same as uh, what I what I estimate this lift will be. As far as I can see, the only people who will actually use this lift are the casual skiers who turn up for a sneaky one day skiing. But here is another problem. OK, how are you going to stop people from driving up the hill? At the base of Courchevel Valley, there is a little village called Grand Carré. OK, now it's actually a, to most people, it's a roundabout, but there is a little village there as well. And from that roundabout, if you go straight on five minutes, you end up in Bozelle. If you turn right, 15 minutes later, you turn up in Le Pra. Now, if you gave someone the option that they could either drive straight on or turn right and go halfway up the hill, I can guarantee you that that uh, everybody is going to be going up the hill. For Courchevel, in this in this in this period of time where Courchevel has been dithering about this lift, okay, and we're talking 20, 30 years, Courchevel has upgraded a lift in Le Pra. They have built a massive underground car park right behind the lift. They have they have basically done what they should have done in Bozelle, but they've done it in Le Pra. And because they've done it in Le Pra, putting one in Bozelle almost seems surplus to requirements. And if you thought that having a lift that runs from the bottom of the valley directly to a ski resort sounds a little familiar, well, again, if we look further down the valley, just literally five minutes down the valley to Breed Le Bar, uh, they built a lift which services Maribel and they built it in 1992 or they built it for 1992, the Winter Olympics. I'm sure when they built that, they said exactly the same thing that uh, the, the mayoral candidates are saying at the moment. How, you know, it'll, everyone here will stay down in Breed Le Bain and this will ferry everybody back and forth. I'm going to say no. 
highlighting the problem using that lift as an example. And I'm, even though Mirabel Alpina, who run the lift systems in Mirabel, aren't the same people who run the Courcheval ones, they are birds of a feather. They open at 8.30, they shut at 5, 5.30. Okay, and so if you are staying down there, as soon as you finish skiing, zoink, you, you can't hang around in resort for any year, otherwise you've got to end up taking buses, you know, which people do at the moment. So again, that's not helping public transport or it's not, the, those buses are still gonna run. So yeah, personally, to, to, uh, to, to summarize, I think this is one huge, if it does get built, it'll be a huge white elephant. Um, I don't know what the translation to white elephant would be in, in French, Someone said, and I, I, I might be talking at my ass, but basically they said that people living in Breed Le Bain had paid higher taxes for a longer time after that to basically pay for that lift. Okay, I don't know if it's true or not, but it sounds true enough, which is why I'm saying it. But again, when someone says, "Oh, this lift is going to be expensive." you say who's going to pay for it if the people who live in Bozell don't mind having their taxes raised by however much then go for it so that's it the the fabled story of Courcheval building a lift up from Bozell to, uh, to Courcheval if you have any comments please leave it in the comments down below as always subscribe like leave a comment and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao.